Peter, thank you very much for coming to our event. Of course. Uh, we are at the um, International Institute of Longevity event dedicated to longevity clinics. Where do you think the future of longevity clinics is going the next 10 years? So there are two different parts to this. There's the diagnostics and the therapeutic side. The diagnostics today is expensive and it is, um, uh, you know, large MRI and CT and DEXA scan machines. I think that eventually we're going to see the same road that we've seen with every other technology that when we digitize something, we can dematerialize, demonetize and democratize this, what I call the six D's of exponentials. And I think we're going to move a lot of the diagnostic side out of the hospitals, out of the doctor's office, out of the clinics, I call them centers, into the home, where at home, we're eventually going to have our, you know, I'm wearing my, my uh, CGM, my aura ring, we're going to have a multitude of sensors on the body, in the body, in your bed, in your toilet, in your car, every place, collecting data about you 24 seven. So I think a lot of that diagnostic side will dematerialize, we may still have in, in fact, the, the size of, of MRI machines is shrinking. Um, but I think the therapeutic side, where we're going to be delivering a whole set of advanced therapeutics, I think will also uh, will likely be delivered in the centers in the longevity centers. So I think we're going to shift today, most of the centers are 90% diagnostics and and 10 percent therapeutics where the therapeutics is advice it is uh lifestyle. hormone lifestyle all of those things but we're not delivering yet um you know stem cells or epigenetic reprogramming or advanced advanced you know advanced genetic treatments and i think we will get there i think we'll get there this decade uh and a lot of those therapeutics will be at the centers but a lot of the diagnostics will be, again, at your home or on you, uploaded to your AI that's gathering all of this data and is monitoring small micro changes through the day. Many of the clinics are not using wearable devices. They don't consider them a medical uh, solution. But um, how can we make it more effective, actually, for clinics to understand that um, taking uh, this approach of digitalizing, bringing the digital aspects of a lifestyle uh, into the medicine, into the medical field, could be actually a very added value to or the, the first screening of diagnostics? Yeah, I think it's going to happen as they lose their members uh, to those centers that do have the uh, uh, the wearables, because I, I think. You know, the idea that you go once a year to go and get, you know, I use the term uploaded to the cloud um, is too infrequent. I think, you know, the notion that every day my data is being collected, um, you know, in addition to this stuff, I have, you know, a blood pressure cuff that's connected and a, uh, you know, a in body weight system that's connected that's monitoring not just my weight but my muscle mass and, and mass B, bmi and all of those things so there's there's a whole you know i have a large venture fund that's investing in these technologies and they're getting better and better more and more accurate um again so we know how to test how can we motivate the client then to change because they will yeah. be very well monitored yeah. and actually going forward even more than so we need to make it so convenient so easy that so where are we going we're going towards a world where we are wrapped with ai everywhere mm -hmm. on our bodies in our home in our office in our car so if you've ever seen the movie iron man uh, there's Jarvis as the AI. So I want you to imagine that you turn on Jarvis as your health coach and it's, you're going to be talking to it all the time. It's, it's going to be helping you recognizing people's faces, remembering people's birthdays, making your life automatic and magical. Um, and so you can turn on health coach and it's going to say, Peter, instead of taking the elevator, there's stairs right over there. Listen, don't eat so quickly, slow down and chew your food 20 times. And before you take your first bite, take a deep breath in, activate your parasympathetic system. It will help coach you minute to minute, day to day, if you want. You can turn it off, but if you want, um, and I think people need to make a choice. They need to make a choice about, do they want to have a longevity mindset? Do they want to, um, to basically, uh, 
you know, extend their health span. I think that is something you can do. The other thing is I want you to imagine a future in which when you're being monitored 24-7, your blood chemistry is, that is being uploaded to your kitchen and the robot in your kitchen is preparing food that is, that is specifically for your biochemistry today, right? What do you need right now? And so the food that you get meets exactly your needs, your caloric intake and, and such. And you your can, restrictions as well. And your restrictions. Yeah. You can override that if you want. But it's how do we make it so convenient, so easy, mm -hmm. that you'd have to go out of your way to be unhealthy? I think that's a future we're looking for. So what do you think about the role of mindset uh, in all this? So I think mindset is the single most important thing. I teach mindsets. I talk about the notion of having a, a purpose-driven mindset. If you uh, have a a world in which your future is bigger than your past. You're looking forward to the life you're living into. You know, I think about a longevity mindset, um, and I, I talk about this. A longevity mindset is the understanding, the belief that science is, is getting more and more capable of, of extending your health span, that in some period of in the future, maybe it's five years, maybe it's 10, 15, 20, but at some point, Science is going to begin to extend your life for more than a year for every year that you're alive. And if that's the case, then you are going to want to take care of yourself to intercept those breakthroughs. Yeah. And there has to be a mindset motivation that keeps you, you know, getting up out of bed at six in the morning or 630 to go to the gym or has you refuse that dessert or has you refuse an extra glass of wine. I love what actually Dean Ornier said today, that people should stop being afraid of dying, but start actually living. Yes, I, I love that. It's beautiful. Really beautiful. Yeah. And it's, uh, I think, summarize our discussion. So thank you very much yeah. for your time and thank you very much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.